at the postcard parade, the post red apple. Good evening, darlings, and uh, a very warm welcome to Wednesday Night Live with me, Bodie, and I'm going to be with you for the next 59 minutes. Oh, how are you, darlings? Have you had a good day? It's lovely to be here with you. And let's see, let's, sh shall I just dive straight in? We'll cut out a bit of the bad in ours and we'll just, we'll jump straight into the, uh, the hot steaming action with the first cab off the rank. Oh, I need to put this on to uh, all doings, don't I? There we are. <clears throat> first cab off the rank, Jimmy Quinn. Good evening, Bodie and all. Good evening, Jimmy. Lord, stiff upper lip. Hi, Mr. Bodie. Hello to you. Steve Cold, Stephen with a PH. Good evening. Andrew Buttigieg, who we know and adore as Iva Spotty Butty. Andrew says, a very good evening, Boaty, and Pips with an IQ higher than 42. I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that that might be a reference to the most recent episode of uh, Mustard Talks to a Load of uh, uh, American Children for some weird <laughs> or Flat Earth Lunatics. Um Ah, and uh, Tra Trace the Greenwood, who's also here, is having a laugh at that. And she says she enjoys the way that Mustard deals with the, um, uh, with the, uh, uh, with the, uh, with the nice uh, American and um, foreign people who are almost certainly not mentally retarded in any way, shape, or form. Cheers, darlings. You're very good health. And Trace goes on to say, hello, everyone. I'm fresh out of the pan here. Not sure what that means, but there we are. Uh, Steve Cole says, sorry about the other night, Boaty. I got lost in the, chat, in the chat. We lost a few sailors that night. Yes, I, uh, I suspect that we did indeed. But uh, not to worry. Not to worry. We'll pick up some more along the way. I'll get some nice Welsh ones to, to mix in. Even up the uh, the old um, interracial <laughs> doings a bit. Get, get more Welsh on the. Oh dear. <clears throat> uh, Barry Scrottery's Hill, evening all and the rev. Frank G underscore 05 is back with us again. That's lovely. Evening, Bodie and chat. Hope you're all okay. Joe is here. Uh, good evening, all. I will be listening in. That's good to know, Joe, as I just finished work. Hope you had a good shift. Sorry if I upset you on Monday, Jason. Let's put it past us and move on. Big Joe hugs. Ah, you didn't upset me, Joe. Uh, you probably upset. <laughs> you probably upset. You've really upset somebody else, but no, you haven't upset me. I, I still love you to bits, and I always will. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, uh, just a week until Pride of Longbridge now. Dear God, is it? Oh, dear. Goodness. Oh, hello, Simone is here. Hooked on classics. And, of course, we have to say a very, very happy birthday and many happy returns to our lovely friend, Simone. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Hooked on classics. Happy birthday to you. Hope you've had a wonderful day, Simone. 
Sorry I couldn't make it to your live stream, but many, many happy returns of the day. Dracula just got out of his coffin, says Jimmy Quinn. <laughs> Chaz Brown is here and says, Evening, Squire. Ed Usher is with us and says, Hi, Mr. Boaty. I hope you're well and have had a good day. I'm cut... Bloody hell. <laughs> God. Sometimes I should read these ahead, you know. <laughs> I'm currently in the nude, sitting in my wing-back chair in front of the fire with a cognac and waiting to enjoy your live stream. Well, thank you for painting us such a, a vivid uh, picture with your words. And uh, I think I speak for all of us when um, when I say that uh, <clears throat> I'm... Well, I won't. I was, no, I'm, I won't say I'm enjoying the vision of you nude in your wing back chair with your cognac. Uh, but I will say I appreciate that we all get to be a a, a part of it. I, I imagine Trace will be enjoying it very much. Uh, Trace will probably be asking you if you've got a if you happen to have a webcam. Oh, sorry to hear that, Barry Scrat. A bloody fly tippers tonight outside my garage. It backs onto the garden. Oh, that's an awful thing, isn't it? I mean, fly tipping is one of those antisocial crimes that we should bring back flogging for. They need to be flogged. And I don't mean sold. Neil is here, um, a.k.a. the Gibbonator, a.k.a. the very, 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 very nice man. <laughs> Hello, all. How are we tonight? How are you, Neil? How's things with you? Uh, Trisha is here, the lovely Trisha Alderman. Hi, Jason, and all in chat. Um, I don't know how Mustard can put up with it, um, says Andrew to uh, Trace. I don't know. Well, yeah, I don't know why he puts up with it. I suppose it's flattering because he's getting enormous numbers, and I would probably do the same. But uh, And hopefully it will pay off for him in the long run. I mean, if he's making money from it, um, and obviously the potential is there with the kind of numbers he's getting. Even without the channel currently being monetized, um, he could certainly get some sponsorship slots on a, on a live stream that's getting audiences of 3,000, 4,000. Otherwise, it would just be a pointless waste of two hours of your life. <laughs> oh, dear. <clears throat> Oh, I see. That's why you're fresh out of the pan. You just watch mustard cook up a thing. Uh, Pingu is with us. Pingu Concord. Warm Wednesday wiggles to you, oh gracious reverend. And uh, back at you, Pingu. Same to you. Um, <clears throat> happy birthday, Simone, says Joe in capital letters. So he really means it. Frank Kerr uh, says, Boaty, have you decided what car to go to Pride of Longbridge in if you are going? Um, no, I haven't given it a moment's thought. Uh, I don't want to think about it too much because I'll, um, I'm absolutely dreading it. Absolutely dreading it. I was hoping it was still about three months away. I'm not looking forward to it in the least. And I'm confidently expecting to hate not just every single moment that I'm there, but I'm expecting to hate the journey down, hate the journey back, Hate going to bed the night before, knowing I've got to get up early. Hate getting up early. Hate the night at work, so I'm going to be really tired. Uh, and hate going to bed that night, so I'll be too late, I'll be too drunk, and I'll be absolutely exhausted. So uh, so what card am I going to um, enjoy all of that hatred in? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I was told to take Dick a Dum Dum, because uh, it would be the only one there. So, yeah, maybe, maybe that. Maybe that. I'm absolutely dreading it. What a shame COVID isn't a thing anymore. I could claim to have that. I mean, you know, COVID had its downside. I think we would all agree. I mean, there was the restriction on our movements. There was the unavailability of... Um, uh, of certain things in the supermarket, and not least, there are uh, <clears throat> oh, far, far, far too many hundreds of thousands of uh, of premature deaths, of course, including Tim Brooke Taylor. 
Um, <clears throat> but the one positive of COVID was it gave you a great um, social excuse for not doing things that you don't want to do. I'm terribly sorry I've tested positive which sounds a lot better than the one that I normally use when I'm invited to do something that I don't want to do. And I say, I'm terribly sorry. I've checked my diary and I'm afraid I'm watching television that night. Uh, and people just assume that you don't want to go, quite rightly, but of course you don't want them to know that. You want to be tactful. Where they're saying you've just, post, um, you've just uh, tested positive. I kept wanting to say posted, posted testative, testicles. Testicles, testicles, one, two, three. Oh, I haven't sworn yet tonight. And we're 10 minutes in. I'm doing really well. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Well, I mean, maybe this could be feature one. What can we think of to replace COVID as an excuse for not doing things that you uh, that you don't want to do? I'm terribly sorry. I've tested positive for gonorrhea. No, no, because that's... You can still go out when you've got gonorrhea, can't you? Um, I don't know. What's a communicable disease? <clears throat> I'm terribly sorry. I've tested positive for being a Liverpudlian. I don't know. Well, you give me your ideas. We'll come up with something between us, and then we can all use it. Uh, Simone has come for some more cake, and why shouldn't she? Did you have a nice day, Simone? asked Jimmy. Sophie is here. Hi, Boaty. And all, oh, how are we? Um, <laughs> just smile and wave, boys. Just smile and wave. <laughs> oh, you did. Oh, that's good, Simone. You've had a good day. And uh, uh, you're very welcome. Thank you, Boaty and all. Um, don't forget to like, says Jimmy Quinn, getting in an early reminder. And 11 of you already have. Trey says, I'm worried about nude ghoulies on a leather chair. Sweaty. And she makes it clear that that's in with regard to Ed uh, being naked um, watching me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Naked on leather. That is, um, oh, that is a thing, isn't it? As anybody who's had a little bit of action on a leather sofa will know only too well. And, um, I don't mind admitting that I do fall into that category. In the diagram of the Venn diagram of people who've had a little bit of action and people who've had a leather sofa in their lives, I do the fitting into both things, whatever you call that bit of a Venn diagram. I can't remember. <clears throat> All I can remember about Venn of diagram fame is when he did that children's television programme, Mr. Venn. As if by magic, the shopkeeper appeared. Oh, yes. I think we all enjoyed that, didn't we? I'm glad we haven't fallen out, says Joe, but sorry to upset your friend, Joseph. <laughs> I know, Joe. I know. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> I'm also interested in what card is bringing to Pride of Longbridge, says Neil. Oh, God. Um, oh, God. Well, I'm going to be late getting there and I'm going to be late getting to work, so the fastest one, probably. Maybe Stigba? Um, what cards have I got? Oh, hang on. What about Minge Bag? What about Minge Bag? Stigbert's going to cost too much in fuel. I'm going to be skint. I'm going to be... It suddenly occurred to me, doing preparations for... Because, you know, Monday's not too far away. I just thought, bloody hell, I'm going to use a bit of petrol. I'm going to... Anyway, well, I'll worry about that later on. Um, I never really understood the phrase fly tipping, says uh, Simone. If a fly was in a restaurant, it would never get a tip. Um, oh... Well, I don't know where the phrase fly tipping comes from. If I had to guess, I assume that it's fly tipping as in on the fly, is it? So one of you clever luck will know, or you'll Google it. I assume it means tipping on the fly. So, you know, travelling along and 
getting rid of your rubbish as you are, maybe not while you're actually moving, but en route, on a journey. I imagine that that's what it refers to. I don't know, though. John Studley is with us. Hey, Boaty and hey, chat. I've had a bad day today. Not been feeling very well, sick and dizzy again. It's not good. Oh, John, we are sorry, mate. Uh, Andrew says, uh, Neil, I thought Boaty was travelling in the boot of yours. It might be the only way you get me there. It might be the only way you get me there. Uh, Trisha says to John that she's sorry he's, he's not been so good, and we all do. Um, <laughs> oh, and Ed Usher would like to make it clear to uh, Tracy that he does have a webcam, a webcam, <laughs> if you're interested in engaging in conversation. Oh, God. Well, just bear in mind that you will both be nude. I guarantee you Tracy will be nude at this moment in time. Gosh, says Smelly Hole. The image of Ed in his chair is giving me a little tingle. <laughs> Good video tonight, Boaty, says Jimmy Quinn. Thank you. That's very kind. Uh, don't go, Boaty, says Jimmy Quinn. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, oh, dear, Boaty, says Trace. Getting me into trouble again. Uh, and I hope you don't suction onto the chair there. Dad Smith is with us. Evening, Boaty, and chat. Um, oh, oh, John, that's rotten. John's getting the same symptoms as when he has his TIAs and doesn't like it at all. Well, I imagine he wouldn't. Um, <clears throat> we should start a book on how long it will take for Boaty to swear. Well, we're 16 minutes in, and oh, well, I'm going to struggle with this. Neil says... Well, I can't read that out because that means I will swear and oh, can't be bothered itis is what I usually come out with, says Neil. Uh, it's a thing that you can catch when you can't be bothered. I may have changed some words there. I suggest you take Lewis Hamilton to Pride of Longbridge. He will be the easiest to push out of the mud bowl. Oh, don't just don't. Oh, God. Bad Books is with us. Good evening. Um, oh, and Ed would like to reassure us all that he's put down a tartan blanket onto his leather wingback chair before getting nude and comfortable. Uh, when are you getting hubnut on, asked Steve Cold. <laughs> well, I could try. I imagine I know what the answer would be. I mean, the answer to that is probably never. But I could grab him at a show, couldn't I? I could grab him at a show and engage him in conversation. I wonder if he knows who I am. I know I know people have mentioned me in his live streams. So I know he probably knows the name. But I would bet a large amount of money that he wouldn't recognise me if he saw me. Funnily enough, and I'm not absolutely sure why, I watched two of Hubnut's videos today. Um, the uh, the emotional ones where he, after his marriage broke up, and he did the one where he um, said, look, people have been trying to come around. Bugger off, you know. Oh, oh, that's not a really bad swear word. That doesn't count. You're not welcome. You can't come... <laughs> And I saw the comment that did make me ch I mean, I really felt for the guy, you know. His marriage has broken up. He's um, got a bit of notoriety on YouTube and uh, people are trying to come round to his house because, you know, in those days, it was pretty easy to figure out where he lived. He's obviously a lot more covert um, now and with jolly good reason now that he's a a family man with a fiancé and uh, stepchildren and whatnot. So good on him for that. But, yeah, of course, he did that video, making it clear that, <clears throat> that it is not just okay for people to pop round and see if he's in and have a cup of tea and all of that sort of thing. And he was talking about a lot. And I remember, I remember watching it few years ago and uh, thinking it was really quite moving and then he did a follow-up as well 
But I saw one of the comments today that I hadn't seen before, and it just amused me. Um, and the comment was basically, uh, <clears throat> let me sum up this video <laughs> or give a synopsis to this video for anybody who doesn't want to watch all of it. Go away. You're not welcome. But can I sell you something before you go? And uh, <laughs> I thought that. I thought that was quite amusing, actually, because, yeah, it's this whole video. Of, look, it's my personal space. <laughs> You're not welcome. Know your place. Know your limits. Don't try and meet me in person. Don't want anything to do with you, but do buy some merchandise. I've got this and this and this. I mean, I'm joking, of course. Poor old Hubner, because he's a uh, kind of... Um, you know, in the small pond of UK car content creators, he's one of the biggest fish, isn't he? And, of course, there's always tall poppy syndrome, where if somebody is a little bit more successful, then they will be one of the tallest poppies and they're the first ones to get their heads chopped off or to get shot down or whatever metaphor you want to use. And I'm sure, as I keep saying, I've never met the guy, and I'm sure he's a perfectly nice guy. A perfectly normal guy. He's probably got his faults like we all do. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, that comment just amused me. You're not welcome. Go away, but buy some merchandise before you go. Well, there you go. That's kind of what it's about, isn't it? That is um, that is life as a YouTuber. Yeah, I put content out there. I want you to buy. I want you to buy my merchandise, but don't come a knocking on my door. Understand the relationship that we have. I create content. You watch it. End of story. We are two ships that are not destined to collide in the night. Whereas, um, just to be clear, that's that's not my point of view. I want to meet each and every one of you. All I would ask of any of you is um, don't come round on spec unannounced. But if any of you want to pop round for a cup of coffee or a glass of wine, my God, I would make you very welcome. I would give you a hot or cold beverage of your choice. And I would probably try and feed you because I am a bit of a feeder. And you're all very welcome at the restaurant. Very, very welcome indeed. And uh, let be assured that you would have all of my attention uh, and absolutely no discount whatsoever. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, dear. <coughs> Sell some MoMA, says Andrew. Uh, furious driving will do. What will he do? Sorry, I've lost the plot. I'm probably behind on the comments. What will Furious Driving do? Furious Driving will do. Oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> oh, hello. Mustard's here. Captain Mustard. Hello, everyone. And uh, hello, dear sir. I saw your live stream time. Have you really got food poisoning? And if you have, I'm sorry. Um, but, you know, I guess... I mean, I hope it wasn't too serious, uh, my dear friend. And all I can say is that, unfortunately, food poisoning is the sort of thing that can happen when you are a terrible cook. And you really should stick to takeaways. I know they're expensive. I know, I know. But hopefully, this new channel of yours and Project Nigel, hopefully they will both take off magnificently so that you can exist entirely on takeaways uh, and then you and your family can live safely and not in constant fear of, um, of food poisoning because something has been improperly uh, prepared. Um, you know, the clues have been there all along. Let's face it, anybody who puts mustard on a chocolate biscuit, you know, their place probably isn't in the kitchen. You know, they're probably going to be better in a shed, trying to make um, trying to make a book stand out of um, out of a couple of old pieces of wood, something like that. But I hope you're feeling much better now, 
And um, if you're still having trouble downstairs in the engine room department, then get yourself some corn flour, mix it with a bit of water and just um, eat that. And that will thicken things up nicely. It'll be a lot more comfortable for you, uh, dear boy. <clears throat> um, where did I get to? On the fly, I agree with you both on definition. Oh, right, yeah, the, the fly tipping thing. Will be good, says Steve. Um, the green stripe has gone, says Joe. Yeah. Now then, there has been another exciting development in... <clears throat> oh, what were we calling it? What's the name of the bloody company again? Um, oh, what are they called? There's a sh in it and an A. I've forgotten what they're called, but it's gate. It's auto windscreen gate or whatever they were called. I've forgotten what the bloody company was called. Joe won't have forgotten. It'll be the first thing on Joe's mind when he wakes up in the morning and the last thing on his mind when he goes to bed at night. And I imagine that their customer services team, uh, they're probably all on some form of antidepressants and they've probably got some kind of um, support structure for because they'll all be living in fear of who has to take the next phone call from Joe. <laughs> Auto glass. Auto glass gate. That's what it was. But there has been a development. So for those of you who don't know, let me bring you up to speed. <clears throat> Joe has a very, very nice... Rover 25 called Michael Jackson. Sadly, one night, Michael Jackson's windscreen developed a jolly big crack and it had to be replaced. Very sensibly, Joe contacted his insurance company and through them, he booked a repair or rather a replacement with auto shot, with, with autoglass. I think that's what they're called. Now, autoglass turned up and they did replace the windscreen however they replaced it with a windscreen that had a green tint to the top of the windscreen whereas the original windscreen it didn't have that green tint now some cars of that type of that period they had a green tint it was considered an extra uh an opulent addition a luxurious touch but joe let me tell you joe didn't like it because it wasn't original and joe was not backwards in contacting the company and expressing his displeasure in no uncertain terms and the company took his argument on board they accepted his evidence and they accepted that the windscreen had not been replaced exactly like for like, which had been Joe's requirement. And rather than tell him to go off, because technically and legally his contract is with the insurance company and the autoglass for a third party, but rather than tell him to go off, they agreed to come and sort it out for him. And they sent a particular employee that they had, that everybody in that company, they hate him. You know, I'm sure you've all worked in a company where there's one guy and it's that guy, that guy that everybody hates. So they thought, we will send this one to Joe because, you know, could be a bit of fun. It might kick off. And this guy was an absolute rotter, an absolute rotter. Uh, in many ways, shapes or forms. And unfortunately, um, after trying to deal with it calmly and professionally, Joe had no other option than to beat him up quite severely. So police and ambulances were called. Uh, I think the chap is still in hospital recovering, uh, but I can confirm that he has been sacked by the company for not putting up a proper defence. Apparently, when Joe first caught him, uh, and I think it was with a, a right hook, then the autoglass guy had his hands down at a point in the escalated proceedings where 
he should have had his guard full up. So Autoglass have summarily dismissed him on the basis that he represented the company very badly by not putting up a decent fight. The fight went on for a while after that first punch, don't get me wrong, but it was a bit one-sided. Now, fair enough, Joe connected with a good right hook and the guy was staggered, probably a bit stunned, but he didn't go down and that is to his credit. So Joe piled in um, with, um, uh, with a left hook and then properly put him down with, uh, with a right uppercut. And that was the point at which um, a passerby saw what had happened um, and, um, and called an ambulance. Um, but yeah, so that, that happened. Now, of course, that meant that the windscreen hadn't been changed and Joe still had his green stripe. So, was he going to just let it lie at that? Not our Joe. Our Joe is made of, of sterner stuff. So, Joe went down the legal route and um, took out an immediate um, court action in the small claims court, because it's only a relatively small thing, uh, filed it, <clears throat> sent the appropriate copies to the company and so on and so on and so on, uh, and um, basically put the fear of God up them. Uh, and they said, look, if we come and replace the windscreen and give you a full refund and pay you a four-figure sum for compensation for, you know, your bruised hands um, and your the time you've had to have off work, um, and so on and so on. And if we issue a national apology in the national press, would you be willing to drop the lawsuit? And where, th uh, and where things stood up until today was that Joe had said, yes, I will, but only when the job is done, because I've got no trust in you. I've got no trust in our partnership together. You have caused me to lose that trust. So uh, I need to catch up fully, but as I understand it, what actually happened today was that um, Autoglass came out. They have replaced the windscreen with um, a windscreen without the green stripe. Uh, and I imagine that if he hasn't done it already, then he'll do it first thing tomorrow morning. Joe will withdraw the lawsuit. And um, all we can take from that is that it's been, it's been a difficult time for all involved. Um, and to be honest, my sometimes, even when people are not nice people, then your heart goes out to them a little bit. And Joe has ended up with quite a few thousand pounds in compensation. He's got the windscreen that he needs in his car. Uh, and for all I know, he's probably got some good content for some videos. Um, Autoglass have got the nightmare of this legal action lifted from above their heads. But my heart goes out to the guy who is in hospital with a broken jaw, a shattered eye socket, and um, uh, a broken cheekbone, I think, who now, when he finally gets out of hospital, um, hasn't got a job. So let's, as much as you may have deserved it, Let's just give out some, and this could be, this could be the start of a massive change in his life. I mean, it's savage, it's awful, but maybe it was the kick up the bum, except it wasn't a kick up the bum, um, unless Joe didn't mention it, then I don't think he actually kicked him up the bum. He just, you know, punched him very severely and harshly and mercilessly in his head. I don't think he kicked him up the bum. He might have when he was down. And he might have just not told us about it, either because he didn't want to show off um, or because he thought we might think less of him if we kicked a man when he was down. I mean, he has got CCTV footage of it. And, you know, perhaps one day he will share that with us and we'll find out. But let's all hope. Let's all hope that by beating this guy senseless and depriving him of paid employment, this chap will realise the error of his ways. 
And when he does come out of hospital, disfigured as he might be, as he heads to the unemployment exchange to sign on, let's hope that a light bulb has gone off in his head and he decides that this is going to be the first day of, 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 the, of the rest of his life and he's going to jolly well live it differently. I imagine that he might become a, a minister of the church like myself or, you know, perhaps, um, oh, perhaps a missionary. Perhaps he will dedicate the rest of his life to improving the lives of others. And I sincerely hope and wish that that happens. Ah, so there we are. That is the story of the green stripe. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, if the weather keeps up, Pride of Longridge will be a mud bath. Still, good for hay fever sufferers. Well, there you are. There's, uh, there's always an upside. I would rather get COVID than go to Pride of Longridge, says Jimmy Quinn. Uh, yes, me too. Uh, one hour and five minutes for 10 quid, says Andrew. Guessing on when I'm going to uh, swear. Simone says, sorry, everyone, I can't stay. I have a delivery tomorrow. And I need to be alert and awake early. Tat half an hour. So, well, good night and um, happy birthday again. Thank you for popping in. You could grab him at Pride of Longbridge, says Neil, talking about Hubnut. Um, and if you grab him, says Black Lines, ensure that you have a crowd around to keep him in place so he can't escape. Oh, dear. I'm on about starting a Pride of Longbridge group chat if it's something everyone is interested in. I'm sure there will be, Neil. <clears throat> oh, um, Neil, says John, I won't be able to go to Pride of Longbridge as my operation is that weekend on the 13th, mate. So I'm sad I can't go, but my health has got to come first. Of course it has. And good luck with the up, John, says Black Lines, and we all echo that. Uh, Ed Usher asks, Mr. Boaty, do you think the organisers of Pride of Longbridge will mind my nudity, or do you think I will have to stay in the 75 Connoisseur for the event? Well, what an interesting question. I don't know what their stance is on nudity. Um, but do you know what, Ed Usher? I appreciate your question, and I appreciate your stance on how you wish to comport yourself in your own life. And I appreciate your right to nudity. And I'm going to stand with you. Literally, I'm going to stand beside you, and I'm going to stand in support. I will attend Pride of Longbridge completely naked. That's right, completely naked, in order to show my absolute solidarity for you and your personal choices. And um, <clears throat> hopefully, <clears throat> they'll call the police and I'll be escorted from the premises before I've had to spend too long there. Oh, hope springs eternal in the human breast. <laughs> uh, sorry, I was just thinking that nudival would be quite a good thing, wouldn't it? Nudival. For the classic car enthusiast nudists in your life. I'd be up for that. Who'd be up for nudival? Uh, I don't mind hubby, says Barry Scratter. I just wish he would cut that mullet off. Oh, well, each to their own. Mr. Stephen Paddy from Port Sunlight in the Will, the Lesser Peninsula, says, Is Hooked on Classics on here? Birthday girl online tonight. I was on the live she did tonight. How's your day been, Mr. Boaty Old Chap? You missed her, Mr. Stephen Parry. She's been and gone. Uh, Smelly Hole says, Ed, can I join you in the 75? And do you have aircon? Uh, have you any champagne at your home for us, Mr. Boaty asks? Uh, uh, no, not at the moment. But I could lay some on. Let me know your requirements in advance. <laughs> Neil says, Smelly Hole, are you attending Pride of Longbridge? If you are, I'll make sure I pack some handcuffs for Boaty for you. 
<clears throat> yeah. Are you married? Smiley Hole asks uh, Ed Usher. Dysentery on toast would probably bring in plenty of views. There's a video title there. Oh, dear. Uh, and Smelly Hole is single and ready to mingle, apparently. So that's good. Is this going to end up as a bedtime story, asks Andrew. <laughs> I've heard, says Neil, the second windscreen fitter is still in a coma from Joe's left hook. <laughs> Trace says, <laughs> Joe had, in inverted commas, Joe had no other option but to beat him up. He had no other option. He had no other option at that point. And uh, I'm sure we completely understand that. There might be a clip in there somewhere, Trace, knowing you. <clears throat> oh, Joe, you beastly brute, you, says Andrew. That's what you get for owning a Rover 25, Joe. You'll get nasty. Joe's a right hard and says, Andrew, oh, he is. You don't mess with him. The worst part, says Black Lines, was the nipple cripple from the back while the poor guy was fitting the windscreen. Oh, dear. Trey says, I heard the autoglass man tried to come back with a flying kick, but Joe karate chopped the forward leg and snapped it in two places. Gosh, we need to see the CCTV footage. I heard he gave him the little twister from hell, says Neil. Uh, Buddy Scratter says, I think Joe said he sat on the uh, on the fitter and farted until that was enough to bring on unconsciousness. And that was game over. <laughs> I've heard, says Neil, they have to fly a banner from a plane with auto glasses. Sorry, Joe. For the entirety of the next year, I wouldn't be surprised if Joe had that written into the uh, into the legal contract. Wouldn't surprise me in the least. I mean, they could have just put that on the green stripe on top of the original windscreen and saved a lot of personal injury and violence and hardship. <clears throat> The knuckle duster was just lying there, Your Honour. The embarrassment of having your right nipple removed because it was dead. There's a rumour, says Trace, that the autoglass man is planning a move to Orkney to weave baskets and dream catchers once he's discharged from hospital. Why not? New blockbuster action flick of 2024. Joe, the autoglass man. Yeah, well, I mean, God, if we could organise a rematch, we could sell tickets to it. That would outsell Tyson against Jake Paul, wouldn't it? Uh, Neil says, it seems the CCTV footage is just a blur of hands and feet. Oh, well, there we are. I can, yeah, I can understand that. Uh, Trace says, this is properly the best bedtime story boat is ever given, boat is ever given of. I, I can't read that one out. There's a bad word in it. Oh, dear. We're expecting snow, Boaty. Take a shovel. Crushing Blow Joe. That's his new boxing name. Uh, and then Neil carries on, and he can't help it, can he? Crushing Blow Joe versus the Beige Bomber. Yeah. Um, yeah. I shouldn't have mentioned that to um, to Mr. Lloyd, should I? I think, um, I think we have to accept that Mr. Lloyd's humour and ours are two parts of a Venn diagram that are never going to meet up, are they? I think that just perplexed him. <laughs> Where did I still think it's hilarious? I've actually got, he's saved in my phone. His number is saved in my phone as the beige bomber. <laughs> I think that, oh God. My entire YouTube career will ultimately be worthwhile just for that. And a few other things. <laughs> to all the girls I've fallen off before, that was genius. The Beige Bomber was genius. Some of the stuff that Neil, I mean, all of the ungible stuff. Oh, God. 
where would I be without you lot and these live streams? Uh, the land of the living, probably. Get J <laughs> John Moretti says, get Joe to take a few hundred quid out of Joseph Lloyd for the 45's MOT costs. The bus driving bruiser versus the beige bomber. Oh, God. It writes itself, says Black Lines. Well done. Oh, and well done, John Moretti. Pingu says, should real... Should <laughs> Pingu says, should we all should we all refer to Joe as Mr. Captain Greenstripe Von Buttkick? God. <laughs> oh dear God. Oh. Yes, Pingu. Yes, we should. We should all refer to Joe as Mr. Captain Greenstripe Von Buttkick. Congratulations, Joe. Now rebrand your channel immediately. Actually, I bet you'd do, I mean, Joe's channel is doing fabulously well and we're all delighted for him. It could do even better if the channel was rebranded as Mr. Captain Greenstripe on Butt Kick. The bus driving bruiser. This is the gift that keeps on giving, says Trace. I love that one too. The Bude Bruiser. Where the flesh coloured mankini says Andrew Benny. No. Did I join at a bad time? Says Rover Joe. Rover Joe, darling, there's never a good time to join one of my live streams. I can assure you of that. There is, however, a good time to pour some more wine. Oh God, I'm enjoying myself tonight. I love you lot. You lot are the best. <laughs> the bus driving cruiser. Oh dear. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going to quip to Pride of Longbury, says Pingu, with a water gun for the for hubby. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, uh, no, Rover Joe, you haven't joined at a bad time. We're just talking about Joe killing an autoglass man. He didn't kill him. He didn't. Right, let's stop the nonsense, all right? A joke's a joke. Let's not let it go too far. Joe didn't kill the autoglass man. He just hospitalised him and possibly, we don't know for certain, possibly permanently disfigured him. We don't know how the reconstructive surgery is going to go. But let's take the positives from it. He could have changed that man's life. And he, he might be a better man because of meeting Joe. And uh, I think we all hope and pray that, uh, that, he, that he is. Excellent idea, Andrew. A botini says Pingu. John Moretti says, no. I like a windscreen with a green stripe, and I like a windscreen without a green stripe. But which is best? Only one way to find out. Fight! <laughs> uh, Robert Joe says, I finally managed to clean my room today. Kind of left it to get messy. Whoops. Which room, Joe? Have you only got one room? Oh, do you, um, do you live in a shared house? Or do you live with, um, are you at, still at home with your parents or whatever? That would make sense. Yes, Neil, says Smelly Hole. Bring the handcuffs and the chloroform. I'm going to show Boaty a real good time. Don't bring chloroform. Bring Premier Crew Shabley. It'll have a better effect. If you chloroform me, I'm not going to be able to perform, am I? Whereas poured as much wine as you like down me. Still works. Oh, yes.
<laughs> My God, Boat, he says now, you're going to have your world rocked by Smelly Hole, you lucky old git. Let her the old you. <laughs> uh, Mr. Stephen Paddy from Port Sunlight in the Widow, the Leisure Peninsula, says, when you go to Joe's house, you have to turn up with a crash hat on. Please be aware, this house has a man with a... <laughs> Uh, good old right hook. Lovely story, says Captain Mustard. Uh, Rover Joe's having a laugh at the beige bomber. Um, and Rover Joe says, I can just see Boaty holding him in a <clears throat> in a manly embrace. Barry Scratcher says, Mr. Lloyd was genuinely confused. I hope Cheesy did watch that live or on playback. He was, wasn't he? Bless him. I, I mean, I'll be honest, guys. Um, I did realise quite early on that I love you lot. I love these live streams and I'm very fond of Mr Lloyd. And But the idea of bringing you all together was not a very good idea. And I did realise that. I should have done better with the, with the damage limitation thing. Uh, and as Mr Lloyd said to me himself the next day, he said, I love nothing more than talking to you, but let's not do it. Let's not do it while you're doing a live stream again. Oh, dear. You know, you have different people in your life, don't you? And um, and you have different experiences with them. And, um, yeah, putting Mr. Lloyd in amongst you lot was kind of like putting the, um, putting the Christians in with the, li <laughs> with the lions, wasn't it? Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he didn't get the he didn't get the fantasy fighting thing at all, did he? And I very much doubt that he's going to have a leather jacket made with a beige bomber written on the back. But he didn't take offence at it, so that's something. <clears throat> and I still think that... Um, I see hidden depths in Mr. Lloyd, and I think if he was put in that situation where the fight or flight instinct kicked in, I think, I'm not going to say he'd beat, I'm not going to say he'd beat the bued bus driving bruiser, but I reckon he could go the distance with Joe. And I'll just, I'll just leave that there. <clears throat> Neil says, smelly home, if you do end up in bed with Boaty, just make sure he doesn't fall out of bed again doing his patented side shuffle and bram. Uh, never going to forget that, am I? Never going to forget that. And the weird thing is, I can rem it's burned into my brain. I can't forget it. I can remember the exact layout of that original bloody room in the travel lodge in real. And you've got, so like, the window's here, the bed's here. You've got that little truckle bed there underneath the window. And I was just so discombobulated. And I just thought I was at home. And I thought I knew where the bed was. And then suddenly the bed wasn't there and neither was she. And I kind of fell in slow motion. I vaguely remember thinking, oh, my God, I hope I don't fall on my <clears throat> on my manly need. I could break it. <laughs> Please do <laughs> oh, dear. Well done, Pingu Concord. You've broken boat, he says, Trace. <laughs> and just like that, he's off on a laughing spree. Do it, Joe. You'll get a few German subs. <laughs> God. I doubt those black lines. He'd drink half as much wine if he didn't have to put up with us every night. God, no. You lot keep me sober. Oh, dear. I love these times. If it wasn't for the restaurant going on later at night on a Friday and Saturday, and me needing to get to bed early on a Sunday, I would do live seven nights a week. And if YouTube ever takes off, then I will do live seven days a week. I'll become like mustard. I'll become a total 
YouTube live stream whore. These are just the best times. <clears throat> Neil, I will be on top and he will be strapped down so he can't get away. You've seen the film Misery. I'm actually quite looking forward to this now, to be honest. I love the way this story escalated from a blur of hands to we're just talking about Joe killing an auto glass man. Oh, dear. He didn't kill the auto glass man. The pavement did when he curb stopped him. <laughs> oh, hello. Morgan Morecambe. <clears throat> Welcome to you. Hello, all. How's everyone? Boaty reminds me of the chap in the Gala Bingo advert. <clears throat> right, oh, I haven't seen that. I imagine he's a terribly charismatic and good-looking gentleman. Just like me, you know, if you look at me from about 50 yards away. Uh, I'm still at home, says Robert Joe. It's filled full of car parts. It's doing my head in now. I just want to get the car welded so the interior can go back in. I wouldn't get on the wrong side of Joe, says John Studley. He's a nice man, but you may... <laughs> Uh, you may get a one, two, and good night if you annoy him. <clears throat> Boaty asks Ed, Ed Usher, you don't suffer from brewer's droop? No, I've always had exactly the opposite. Exactly the opposite. Um, when I'm well and truly um, alcoholically lubricated, no sense, no feeling, and I just I can just keep going. I mean, admittedly, I'm an old man now, so exhaustion would kick in but certainly back in the day um <clears throat> apparently the best night's work i ever put in was uh with lisa we were in our place in cyprus and we'd had a minor argument and then we and then we made up and she told me that the next day eventually we were very late getting up when she told me what had happened, I couldn't remember a thing about it. Um, we had a little argument. We um, we went down the Fissy Fassy, the one and only bar in the in the village. Uh, got back to our beach house, had a, had a few more drinks, went to bed, and apparently I was like a rampaging Viking for literally all through the night. Can't remember a thing about it. I was absolutely slaughtered. But, yeah, that's always been the, um, <clears throat> you know, all this talk about Mike Tyson, now that he's having this fight, which is now going to be an exhibition with Jake Paul. The thing they say about heavyweight boxers is that the power is the last thing to go. So even after the legs have gone, the conditioning has gone, the speed has gone, the reflexes have gone, the power is still there, as was shown by, uh, what's his name, Julius Francis. Um, really, really nice guy. You know I'm massively into my boxing, so some of you might not know this. But there was a guy, there was <clears throat> a heavyweight bo British boxer called Julius Francis. Lovely guy, not a bad boxer. Didn't have the career that he could have had for one reason and another, but there were some highlights. And he fought Mike Tyson, um, but kind of at the towards the back end of um, Tyson's career. And you know, I mean, he got he got battered. He got absolutely battered. But he came to prominence again. Um, how long ago was it? A year? Two years? Uh, working in security in his older than me in his mid fifties, he would have been then. Uh, and this was all caught on CCTV. And there's a guy properly kicking off. And they're all trying to deal with him. They're all trying to deal with him. And eventually, Julius Francis, who was as fat as a pig by that point, just kind of shouldered his way to the front, lined the, lined the guy up. The guy started giving it to him. And he just hit him with, uh, with a perfect right hook. And the guy was unconscious before any part of him hit the floor. So they say that the... Uh, the power is the last thing to go for a heavyweight. And I think that with me, the last thing to go through <laughs> through alcoholic indulgence 
is the it's weird isn't it it's the pottering ability um two things i've all i mean age is going to catch up with me at some point either that or cirrhosis of the liver will catch up with me but two things that i can always do no matter how drunk i am cook and podger so <laughs> I might not be able to talk. Walking might be difficult, but I can still put in a reasonable performance and then I can cook a meal afterwards. There you go. That is my claim to fame. Don't put it to the test. Sorry, I missed about 10 minutes of the live stage, Joe. My phone died, but I'm back now. Das Boot. I love that. Das Boot. Um, yeah, Das Boot, the boat better in German, in the original German, than it, with subtitles, than in the English translation. Good, Johan. Sehr gut. Brilliant. If you've never seen it, watch it. Also, excuse me. Also, it's a great story of the autoglass versus cars with Jack. Right, I'm clearly now falling apart, and it has gone midnight, so it's probably time to say our good night. And we will hold this over until Thursday night live, but I will catch up with the comments. Never let it be said that I left you with a comment unread. <clears throat> Neil says, Mr. Lloyd is management. We are shop floor. We are shop floor and banter. And those worlds will never mix. <laughs> Joe, you're the beaued bruiser now. Black Line says, Joe, we've planned your leotard and your walkout music. Robert <laughs> uh, Joe says, I think Mr. Joseph Lloyd should do a music video called Loads of Leather in a Beige Bomber Jacket. Oh, God, I'd love to see that. Oh, I would love to see that. Slip slide in the way. Slip sliding away. The nearer the destination, the more you slip slide away. Oh dear. Oh dear, dear, dear. <clears throat> 33 in chat. You're all Mason, says Steekle. Uh Just a disclaimer, says Joe. I never killed an autoglass technician. But I do enjoy violence, and I feel that it can achieve what words cannot. And yes, I did hospitalise him, and no, I'm not sorry. Fair enough, Joe. Fair enough. Uh, <clears throat> bloody hell, it's Ronnie Cray here, says Morgan Morecambe. <laughs> uh Hey, Joe, where are you going with that gun in your hand? Oh, dear God. Now we're on to the bloody Cray Twins. Neil has got some brilliant stories about the, uh, about the Cray Twins. Oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> I'm no good at boxing, says Buddy Scrutter. I've got glass wrists. Uh, oh, don't freeze the wine. Good shout. Good shout there. Oh, and I need to get some supper on the go as well, don't I? Oh, the wine is fine, actually. Actually, the wine is fine because it's got a higher alcohol content than my wine normally does. So it can last longer in the freezer. Oh, I've got, I've got some minor wine turds. Nothing to worry about. We'll leave it out there. <clears throat> Oh dear. Good night, Boaty and everyone, says uh, Ed Usher. Sorry I must go, but the lovely housekeeper Angela arrived. Good night, Jason and chat, says Trisha. I hope you have a better day tomorrow, John. Uh, we all do. <laughs> Boaty wore a beige jacket yesterday in solidarity. Uh, I, I did. I did. Uh, Rover Joe says, I'll be honest, I can't see Pride of Longbridge going ahead with the weather. That field will be like a bug, no doubt. <laughs> Jimmy, yeah. Uh, 
yeah, I'm not going to read the comment out, Jimmy. I'll get demonetized. But uh, a very wise man said to me in my relatively early years that a baseball bat can be a great leveler. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, darlings. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much for tonight. I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you for all of your company. 33 of you still watching, 17 likes. That's marvellous. And like boat, uh, like mustard, I have a little rule for myself. I'm not allowed to have a glass of wine until at least one person has liked my live stream. So I always like it myself, and that way I'm absolutely in the clear. So please do join me and us. Let's all join each other. Tomorrow night for Thursday Night Live, and Thursday is supposed to be the mad one, but um, thank you, Joe. Oh, 18 now then. Um, yeah, Neil, absolutely. Oh, 37, says Captain Mustard, who's clinging onto the wreckage here, despite having put in more than a two-hour shift on his own live stream. Oh, God, now we're discussing methods of violence. Darlings, thank you so much. It's been a great laugh tonight. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know how much I love it. You know how much I love you. And please, let's do this all over again at same time, same place, 11 o'clock tomorrow night for Thursday Night Live. In the meantime, have a safe and peaceful night uh, ahead. Simone, if you watch this on Catch Up, um may we be the first to wish you a very happy birthday for next year john we're all thinking about you mate you know where we are if you need anything and uh yep have a safe and peaceful night have the best day that you can tomorrow and um <clears throat> just take really really good care of yourselves much much love to you all but you and indeed bosh <laughs>